So again, we're trying to help require protection district pension board of trust board of trusts meeting for January 12th together. Uh, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Right. We will lead into roll call of all board members, trustees, and board members are all, all present. If my fellow board members would look at the agenda and make any additions or deletions, I will make one. I'll call it a deletion or a clarification. Under item number seven, new business, the actuarial valuation report of January 2021 will fall underneath item number three of that new business with the FPGA pension fund. The GRS actuarial fund and the actuarial valuation fund are one and the same. That's the only addition I'll make for a correction. So item two and item A under three are identical? Item under item seven under new business. Right. Item two and item three A are the same. Yeah, okay. We yeah. shall be moving the actuar actuarial valuation report to the GRS actuarial. Gotcha. Any other changes, corrections, or deletions? Perfect. I'll take a motion to approve the agenda as mentioned. Motion to approve the pension board of trustees regular meeting agenda. Second. Second by Director Newby. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Item number five, review and approval of the October 2022 meeting minutes. It seems like a year ago, but if you all would look at the uh, meeting minutes from October Any additions or deletions to the uh, meeting minutes? Yeah. Hearing none, I'll accept a motion to accept the meeting minute from October 2022. I move to um, approve the minutes as submitted. Second, please. Second. All in favor? Okay. Motion passes. Item number six, old business. We have no old business. I guess the only old business is that um, something that I have been working on uh, and mentioning for about the last year about the review of the pension board will come to fruition under new business. But um, that would be the only thing. Are there any items in the old business that I might be missing? Hearing none, we'll move to item number seven, new business. As you will find in your packet is a third quarter of 2022 allocation report provided by FPDA. And if I believe correctly, uh, Ms. Barb, we found no deficiencies or no concerns, but it does provide the, um, uh, it does provide the allocation for the last quarter and everything is appropriate. Am I correct, Ms. Barb? Yeah, it's okay. the third quarter report. So. The fourth quarter will be at the next year. Perfect. And this is a, a great segue, knowing that we don't have any issues in relation to the uh, pension as presented by the FPPA for us to look at as we go to our next item. Um, the pension has been somewhat confusing for myself and my fellow board members, just for the public. Uh, to understand exactly what we are trying to ensure that our, our volunteer and our paid professional firefighters 
having terms of benefit in um, upon their retirement. The division uh, somewhat is because besides Director Woods, we not many of us here have a tremendous background in finance. So what my concern was is uh, was that my board members and myself, primarily me, didn't have a true understanding of what their pension for our fellow firefighters that are working every day out there. So we contracted uh, Ms. Pam Feely, uh, who's a CPA and has a master's of business. And she created a presentation that addresses our pension plan itself for our volunteers to show that show us as a community and us as a board and trustees what we have available for our members. We all know that the pension system you know, amongst any number of organizations throughout the United States somewhat does not have the financial stability as necessary when an employee goes through their career or when someone goes through a career and there's nothing left for them. So Ms. Feely put together the actuarial report from January or December 31st, 2021, if I remember, the last that had been presented and then um, provided a kind of dummy down version so that I could present to the membership. Ms. Feely would entertain uh, presenting even a greater in-depth to this presentation, which will take just a few minutes. Chief, are we gonna put that up for everybody? Yeah. Uh, just to help us get a better understanding of where we are and you know our for our, our firefighters who are dependent upon this so and i am going to apologize to everybody to begin with because i sat through this presentation was completely enamored but then realized Ms. Feely wasn't going to be able to present it. So I'm going to do my best to give you uh, a once presented and now once presenter to you. So um, as you see, Ms. Feely presented a, a, slide pro, uh, a slide program for us to look at. As we look at the next slide, Jake, the uh, presentation outline would just be a brief introduction, talking about the actuarial itself, uh, talking about our firefighters and how that is affected by time and where the funding sources are coming from. So the way that the actuarial report is created is to look at the people in the plan itself, how long that life expectancy of the members should be, how those uh, investments are uh, projected to be able to um, provide proceeds in the long term and what the sources of funding and investments are. It's, it's very similar to what you and I might have in our 457 or 401k, just long-term investments uh, on the, on the uh, principle that we are providing through donations. Next slide. The defined benefit pension program is exactly that. It is a defined benefit. Once monies go in, as long as there's money made, then benefit comes out. It's not like a defined contribution that you and I have for our 401k. This, for, this program is receives benefit due to the contributions that uh, we will talk about here in just a second. Um, you can skip the next slide because I think she didn't. I think she just wanted to talk about how we built this. So the people inside of the Elk Creek plan are basically the firefighters that have, um, have been participating. We'll talk about the demographics here even further, but the way that she broke it down is people in specific 10 year gaps from 20 to 29, all the way up to over 80. As we go into the next slide, time, what she tried to do is determine how long somebody in our plan would be eligible to receive benefits. So she put a line at the uh, end date of 95. And we all know what the end date means. If you don't, it, it means the life expectancy of the people within the plan. But it, give, it gave her the ability to provide a drop dead date to four choice of words, forgive me. Uh, <laughs> uh, delineated end time for this plan and for people within each category. Moving to the next slide, here is the number of participants 
um, or the age of the people uh, this uh, no the number of participants in the plan by year so if we look at uh, 2020 2031 we will have uh, two participants that are over the age of 80 we'll have eight participants that are in between the ages of 70 to 79 we'll have 13 participants that are in the uh, age of 60 to 69 um, two participants, 50 to 59, and then we, we uh, do not have it at this point in time, anybody that uh, meets the other demographics. And as that plays out over to 2091, as we uh, push the actuarial out, you can see how those numbers will drop off. The number, as we go to the next slide, of non-vested members is, she has indicated um, in 2036 to 2092, uh, it is markedly different because of the amount of time it takes. And it takes five years for a member to become vested. Am I correct? Right. Uh, five years for a member to work in the plan to become vested in the long-term benefits of the pension itself. So um, this just basically gives a demographic of how it's going to work out over that period of time. As we move into... The next slide, the funds invested over a period of time benefit plan, this is nothing more than what you and I would benefit from on compounded interest or any investments that we made. And it, it, it just basically shows how the investments through um, a specific strategy would provide an outcome for the members in the long term. Um, looking at the next slide, Jake, it will give you over a 34 year career, a, a balance at an eight, per, well, you can see the difference on that bottom line, 117,000 um, versus 189,000, depending upon the, um, the return on investment. Moving to the next point, the, how the FPPA gets to this investment rate was broken down into three different tiers, long-term, glide path, and short-term pool. And I'm throwing this out like I know what I'm talking about. And I apologize because I, I couldn't answer any specific questions. But in a general sense, it's basically um, over what time period do we wish to receive benefit from. The longer we can go out, the higher the uh, uh, interest rate assumption would be the shorter term, the less interest. And that I would imagine due to the volatility of the market. Um, the benefit though, is the conservative approach that we are taking that the FPPA is placed for the Elk Creek Fire Pension Plan in the long-term pool, which assumes a greater interest rate return of 7%. Moving to the next slide, the actuarial determined contribution is basically looking at all the, the benefits for all the beneficiaries, then looking at the liability and those that are unfunded and completing the, this ratio that allows for it to be calculated over 20 years. So looking at what the longest member's benefit would be versus the shortest member's benefit would be, ensuring that they have the opportunity to have those uh, benefits once they complete the or once they fulfill the requirements for the opportunities to retire, that is essentially a very dummy down actu uh, actuarially determined contribution definition. But the meat of the subject is in the next slide. When we look at the actuarial accrued liability for the department and looking at our, our retirees um, who have perform services for the department and their beneficiaries, our inactive members and our active members, our accrued liability is 2,367,000 and some dollars. When you subtract that by the actuarial value of assets, we are actually overfunded in this plan by 120 cents. That should give us coming and that FPPA is, is working to provide our members a, an appropriate retirement when they become eligible. As we look at the um, next slide, the required annual payment, there, there is associated costs with that. 
And those that um, is an, a portion of this factor, this valuation, in terms of what the um, what this plan will be able to provide. And then finally, the last slide. I hope um, I hope I haven't lost anybody here, but the key, really, for me and I for my fellow board members, is that our plan is solving at 121%. There are pension programs out there that are uh, teetering, uh, that close to failure. We don't have to worry about that. Elk Creek Fire and the state contribute or contributions for 2022 um, have not, or 22, not received until after January 1 of 2021. Um, so that means that they have not been added into the program as yet and uh, are not a part of this valuation. Uh, the plan assets are currently returning 7% annually, which is a benefit, and 16.25 of participants in the plan are not yet vested, but uh, it is factored in that they uh, eventually, well, that is a, a contributing factor in the evaluation process. So that's 13 out of the 80 people in the plan that are not yet vested. So that means that they, since they're not vested, are not a liability, and I won't say a liability, but will not benefit from the plan until they complete their five years. So um, I, I apologize for that if it, it seems convoluted, um, but for my board members, I hope that we come away with a better sense that every time, uh, my fellow trustees, that every time that we sit here in a quarterly uh, pension board meeting, we know that the, the information uh, to this point is as has been presented is that our pension program is as we have hoped it to be. And, um, and that that's the end of my presentation. And I, if you want to ask me questions, <laughs> go right ahead. <laughs> I am not looking forward to answering any questions, but I'm willing to try. Uh, I will guarantee that uh, Ms. Feely will present to us and give more insight at a later pension board meeting. All right. Um, as we move through the, this pension piece on new business, one thing that uh, I've been a board member, I think for five years now, I, I think I finished uh, my tweet. Term, I think maybe a year and then uh, my last term of three. And I had no idea that we had um, people that are giving day in and day out to this organization without the benefit of um, a long term pension. So I am going to present to the board today um, an, an opportunity for us to add two of our, our clerical staff into the administration component of the FPBA pension program. That's Ms. Barb and Andy, is that correct? Adam. Adam, uh, Ms. Barb and Adam. With the approval of this motion from the board members, we would be able to provide administrative staff who do not respond on emergencies who work here day in and day out, the opportunity that they can have a pension, just like our paid firefighters, just like a, a large number of people here in the, uh, our meeting tonight. Um, and I, I believe that they are due. And um, I'm speaking on a turn, but what I would like to do is uh, make a motion that the Oak Creek Fire Protection District allow the inclusion of clerical and other personnel whose services are auxiliary to the fire protection under the FPPA statewide retirement plan. May I have a second? Second the motion. We have a second. Discussion on the motion. I spoke out of turn. Uh, it is my belief that anybody that dedicates time should be benefited when they reach, when they reach the retirement age. The fact that we haven't had the opportunity to provide this to our clerical staff to this point um, should be remedied and it should be addressed. And I believe that it is important for us as a board and as trustees to uh, ensure that anybody who is providing to our protect, fire protection district for the greater good of our community has the opportunity at the end of their career to be able to benefit from those efforts. 
So I speak in favor of the motion. I ask that my board members and my trustees uh, share my concerns and my uh, passion for this. Any other discussion on the motion? I just have a couple questions. Um, I'm assuming that I missed some of the slide where you talked about funds and how we fund this pension plan. Yes, I, so the way that the pension program works with the FPPA is each member has onus in this. They make a contribution. Okay. And then if I'm correct, Chief, the state matches or or is it the department? The department matches. The, the department matches. Right. Right. So there's a shared responsibility between the member, the employee, and the department to ensure that, uh, as we just saw in this actuarial, that there will be some. So, it, so just to make sure that I understand, it's similar to Social Security in terms of it is the personnel actually contribute to the funds and then it's matched dollar yep. for dollar yeah okay and i just want to make sure i clarify that's that's all and another question did we put it in the budget for next year yes we can do that okay. do we need to revise the budget for next year um we'll have to look at it it's, okay. it's not going to be a it's not going to be a large implication it okay and, and that's fine that's all i want to know is yes. Um, as the treasurer, of course, just want to understand how it's funded, and what you're telling me is it's funded by employee and employer, mm -hmm. so it's very similar to Social Security. It is in addition to Social Security, so it is a, it is an honest to goodness pension plan. Yes, which not too many employees employees get nowadays. Correct. So, thank you. So the last part, I, I hear you speaking in favor of the motion. I'm in favor of the motion. I second the motion. Thank you. So uh, discussion on the on the issue of the rules that would apply to the administrative personnel, would they be the same as the other firefighter EOT personnel? Yeah. Or would they be different rules? For the pension? For the pension? Would they be the same? Exactly the same. Correct. So we wouldn't be creating two classes of no employees in the pension. No, it would, everybody would be treated the same. Yeah, everybody would be treated the same, as far as I know. I mean, we could clarify with that PPA. We did reach in. We reach out to it. I didn't realize it was more complicated than it is. I didn't realize it was going to take a board action to actually add administrative staff into it. I know a number of fire departments do that. All their employees are part of it. Um, and so, yeah, it's not going to create like a. a Second class, yeah, there, yeah, there's nothing like that. I think across the board, and so this is for all employees. The, at this for point, all. there's only two clerical staff that meet the description as provided by the FBDA, but for future, but it, it would include clerical staff that are not firefighters, okay, to give them an opportunity that the firefighters have. So it's specific to clerical staff. Yeah, so, it's true. so clerical and administrative. Okay. So, for example, the, the motor pool mechanics would be included. Yes, our fleet manager is essentially yeah. falls under administrative staff. So, clerical slash administrative staff. Right. So, okay. yeah, he'll fall okay. into that. Okay. It's essentially the, the non line personnel. Right. Is, gotcha. So, in addition to the current administrative staff that would be added to this pool, it would also include future. Employees that were part of the administrative yes. staff. It's not going to correct. I, I, I haven't read the exact wording of it, but I wanted to make sure that yeah, any, know, that was included. Any full time administrative slash clerical staff can be included in the pension. <clears throat> well, being the benefit of pensions from various employers that I work in an administrative position, right? <laughs> I'm like very much in favor of this. Any other discussion on the motion? So I say um, just what the administration does for the department. Um, I don't think we could operate like we do without those guys. So I'm definitely in favor of Third time, any discussion on the motion? Motion was made that the Oak Creek Fire Protection District Pension Board of Trustees approve the model resolution for the inclusion of the clerical and other personnel whose services are auxiliary to fire protection under the FPPA statewide retirement plan. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes.
All right, that okay. takes us. This presentation I'm just gonna. I'm gonna do this presentation. <laughs> 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 I'm kidding, but. Well, I, I, um, I'm a person of the. Uh, item number eight. Any other business to be brought before the board in relation to the pension board of trustees? Hearing no, hearing none, I will uh, accept the motion to adjourn. Motion, to adjourn. Uh, uh, motion made by Director Newby, seconded by Director, Director Woods. Woods. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Adjourned Aye. at uh, six twenty-six. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. That's probably the longest one we've had. Yeah, absolutely. All right. <laughs> Okay, we are going to move into our regular meeting. Let me find the updated agenda. All right, at uh, 626, I will call the Elk Creek Fire Protection District Board of Directors meeting to order. Uh, we have commence with the Pledge of Allegiance. Roll call of board members, everyone is present. Would you all please take a chance to look at the agenda and make uh, any additions or deletions? I will make a correction on item number eight, section two, subsection B, that should read the term for proposal, not the term for Contract. Any other additions or deletion? Last time, any other deletions or deletions? I'll uh, accept the motion to approve the agenda as presented. <clears throat> the agenda as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Would you all please review the December 22 regular meeting minutes? Any additions, deletions, or corrections to the regular meeting minutes from December 22? I'll accept the motion to accept the regular meeting minutes from December 22. Motion to accept the regular meeting minutes for December 19, 19, 2022. 19, 20, 20. <laughs> no. Sorry. No, I, I, anybody that is sitting here with a sinus infection, I will go through this. I agree. I'm just teasing. Okay. So I'll try it again. Motion to accept and approve the minutes of December 2022. Thank you. Sharon, and I'm just listening to you. And do we have second. a second? And all of it. Aye. Motion passes. Uh, financial matters. Our uh, esteemed treasurer, Director Woods. Um, slides. Mr. Chief. Just follow me. You're gonna follow me? <laughs> oh. Okay. Next slide. This is just it's today, right? We're reporting on December 10th, 2022, not 19, 2022. So I apologize, um, but I've been fighting the sinus infection for about oh almost a month now. So goodbye. Goodbye. That's me. Can you mute me? Got it. Sorry, Bonnie. It's okay. I mean, or I'm sure. I'm sure. Sure. That's okay. He's confused as I am. Okay. So we're looking at total, since this is for December of 2022, we are looking at revenue for the year. And basically it's 
spot on. So everything that we were expecting, we received to the tune of 99.91% of the budget. I'm going to call it 100% because it's just enough. <clears throat> the contributor, so basically property tax revenue came in at well over 99%. And ownership taxes, even though they dropped in December, were well over the budget amount. The percent contract favorably again because of rising interest rates and interest rates being up there most of the year. We actually <clears throat> recorded other income to more than we thought. Um, it was about $80,000. It's really great. And surf reimbursement finished at 97%. We're actually going to cover surf reimbursement in a future slide. Next slide. Expenses are just the opposite of um, revenues. Revenue is right at budget. Expenses are under budget, about 74%. So, again, contributes to that for administrative expenses at 73% of budget. Overall administrative salaries were at 72%. Of budget legal services because we were supplied money by the insurance company for the foothills lawsuit came in at only 17 percent of budget so all of these contributed that in training we didn't hire a training company the salary wasn't reflected until december of 2022 um, prevention surf expenses all came in under budget a couple things came in over budget. Capital expenditures came in way under 20%. So overall, expenses came out better than anticipated. Next slide. Okay, net income always looks a little weird to me. Um, it drops down in December, but year-to-date net income, net Revenues over expenditures, if you want to get right down to it, because we are really, for a government entity, was a million four seventeen seven sixty one. Compare that to uh, budget, which was 10,000. Again, revenue came in over budget or at budget, expenses were under budget. So we came in with actual money to put in reserves of a million four seventeen seven sixty one. If anybody has any questions, you're welcome to ask them during the presentation. Next slide. Property tax revenue is our biggest income, biggest amount of income. It's well over 60% of the total income that comes in to Elk Creek. And property tax came in, if you look at the craft, they look like the same number. They're within 5,000 of each other. Um, the revenue came in at 3.694 million. I'm sorry, 3.699 million. The budget was 3.694 million. So $5,000 difference again. We can pretty much call that 100% of the property tax revenue that we were expecting we got. Next slide. Let's talk about labor a little bit. If not everybody's been in all of these presentations, labor is. We're reporting it, I don't want to say differently, but making sure we report it accurately. Again, labor came in under the budget, 87% of the budget. But let's make sure we understand that, recall previous presentations where fuel services, we bill out to Inner Canyon at 100%. And there's Inner Canyon people in here. And drink services and maintenance are both at 50% that is built in a canyon. So these revenue numbers, both the budget amount and the actual amount reflect the fact that we bill out some of our services because they're shared, not because we want to build make money because they're shared. <clears throat> so this first slide represents the labor with the billing amounts out of the numbers, but you can see that labor came in at 87% of budget. Again, just adjusted for billing. Next slide. Last year, did our did that in fact stay true um, when we looked at our actual versus budget? I know we were pretty close. For, for 2021? Yeah. No, 2022. Oh, this is 2022. Okay. So that's usually. 
Are you okay now? Yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I was thinking about last year. She's trying to do it. It is last year. Because we were in 2021. But if you're thinking of 2021, um, I have uh, in a spreadsheet, I have some comparisons between 2021 and 2022, but I don't have them on the slide. If you want to talk about it later, okay. Okay. I was just curious if this is still the way mm -hmm. our budgeting is. I know we're on. Under budget, yeah, we're, we're under budget. This slide has both the actuals adjusted for build and the CERB revenue up. These numbers are closer together. Two reasons. One is CERB is out of it. And the second reason is that people, instead of taking time off, they took that as, as money in terms of, um, instead of taking the time off, they took a payment for PTO. So the number is closer because of really those two reasons. CERF is out. The next slide, we'll talk about CERF. Everybody know what CERF is, I assume? Okay, just not Next slide. Okay, this is CERF. CERF came in at 67%. I'm sorry. I'm gonna put the wrong numbers. It's came in at 63%. A budget we budgeted about 858,000 and sort of came in at 39. This is just labor. This does not include any other costs associated with SERP. This is just labor. But SERP is one of the reasons that we actually came in labor wise under budget. Is there obviously more under budget than we are in total under budget? Next slide. <clears throat> this is a surf compared to what we receive back from the state. We build in the, the state a million two seventy one four thirty nine. That's what the number is at the top. In twenty twenty one, we build the state a million two hundred three three hundred five. So they're close. We had a few more fires this year that were out of district. In I'm sorry, last year twenty twenty two, they're out of district than we did in. Um, 2021, and that those numbers are, are reflected there. <clears throat> Oops, I just yet return. We are bringing some more arrows. Okay, so at this point, we've been reimbursed for a million two forty one eight oh six. That is the same as we were reimbursed for in November of 2022. We have one fire outstanding that the state has not reimbursed us for at least as of December 2022. So we have about 26,000, I'm sorry, 29,000 left to be reimbursed. I guess the, the big comparison is that in 2021, we did not receive the CERF monies until the first quarter of 2022. So there's about 40 days delay between the time we submit the invoice to the state versus when the actual money comes back from the state. <clears throat> Excuse me. And last year, it was like 63 days. So our administrative staff has done a lot better this year with invoicing the state, keeping up with getting payments from the state. Next arrow. Chief, there you go. 819,000 is the total. SURF expenses that were reported directly to SURF. These would be things like lodging when we send people out of district. Would be 1099 wages for people that are contractors that actually go to the SURF buyers. That's about 126,000 of that 119. Lodging was about 52,000. Expense reports would be meals, other or sundry expenses. That aren't billed directly to Elk Creek. It's about 74,000. Aviation support was about 5,600. Fuel was about 18,000. And travel was about $403. So that 819,000 includes the wages that we looked at on the previous slide, 539, and includes all of the other expenses. Next slide. Last last month I gave like a list of all the fires, but I don't need to repeat that probably unless somebody wants to know. Okay, next slide. Any questions? Anybody questions? 
Okay. December 2022, that month, it was recorded in the ledger for $396,314. That's what's in your packet. This amount includes a 2023 charge of $98,742, which will be reversed in January 2023, making the 2022 December number for audit purposes of $297,592. So I would like a motion to approve the ledger recorded expenses for the month of December 2022, $396,000. 314 and the December 22 expenses to be corrected of 297,592. Please. Very good. I would move the approval of the expenses of 396 and 314 as the actual expenses for December 31 and then the corrected expenses of 297,572, uh, which will be corrected in this month. And a second on the motion. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you, Treasurer Woods. You're welcome. All right, that moves us into the Chief's report. All right, give me one second here. <clears throat> All right. We have to look again. Oh no. All right. Technical difficulties. Okay, so we uh, we wrapped up the year with uh, 1,424 calls. The last call was answered at 8:20 uh, p.m. and the first call of 2023 was at 1:19 uh, a.m. on January 1st. Um, C shift had the dubious honor of uh, closing out the year that the people are working right now. We uh, wrapped up the year with a lot of positive changes to the department, uh, from the addition to uh, some new employees to the return of a volunteer fire academy. 2023 is going to be a pretty exciting time. Uh, we brought on Garrett Gutman. He's a new firefighter paramedic. He came to us from a department in Oklahoma. He started on A shift on January 1st. We also brought in a HR manager, uh, volunteer firefighter John Zuchman. He has a uh, pretty extensive HR background that we were unaware of when he came to us and he started helping us out and he ended up moving into a part-time HR role. It's going to be a big asset moving forward. That was something we looked at contracting, but one of the problems we found with contracting HR out, if you can't appreciate what a fire department is, it's it's very different beast and having an HR contractor who doesn't, who doesn't really understand the way a fire protection district works, shift work, et cetera, et cetera. It, it was going to be a challenge. So we're pretty lucky to be able to bring him on board part-time. Um, Inner Canyon, North Fork, and Elk Creek, we're continuing to work together. Uh, right now, we're integrating our training schedules and our uh, training calendars. Uh, it's going to give firefighters more opportunities to attend trainings as well as integrate some of our larger scale trainings. Our training captain, uh, Weinfeld and Buckles from Inner Canyon, they started meeting and are working on some large scale classes for 2023. Over the last few months, we've had a significant increase in participation in training by our members, and I, I do believe it's directly related to the quality and organization that Captain Weinfeld brings to Elk Creek. It's pretty exciting. We had, when Keith Wesseldine was handling training, we had a lot of people participating, and then when he moved on over the summer, we it was just it was complicated. We, we didn't have a lot of people participating, and since Captain Weinfeld moved on board, we're, we're actually getting a lot more people involved, which is pretty exciting. Operations. Um, we had uh, we did have some high acuity calls. We we are in our house fire season. We had a number of structured fires, uh, mostly attributed to cold ashes. Uh, that term is they're obviously not cold. <laughs> People will take ashes, clean out their fireplaces. This time we had one cardboard box and one plastic bag that they put them in. And needless to say, those do not keep cold ashes where they need to be. Uh, we also had some high acuity motor vehicle accidents. If anybody saw in the social medias, we uh, may or may not have been involved in several accidents on the highway. They closed down the highway for quite some period of time. We did have an 11 car accident just up from Schaefer's Crossing. Um, luckily, no injuries, but it was during one of those icy storms and it was pretty complicated. The highway shut down for a number of hours. And then just last week, we had the 18 wheeler, which I'm sure everybody's familiar with, which shut down 285 for, I believe, almost six hours. 
Volunteer firefighters had 177 hours of staffing at station one. We're still only averaging 3.2 members per call. And this month, it was a large part of this next statistic. 38% of the calls overlapped. So 40% of the calls were at least two or more at a time. And that is always what uh, that is always what brings our members per call down. And our average response time was up a couple minutes at 11.01. And that was based on winter. We, we had a number of icy days and our response is just slower during those days. For a total of 125 calls for uh, the month, um, it's a little down from last year, December, but up from 2020. We had 12 calls for mutual aid. Uh, most of that was due to the high acuity calls and the long duration. With the overlapping calls, we had to call for mutual aid to help out with them. We just didn't have the staffing. 36 transports, which is up a few from uh, last year. We had 332 hours of training. And probably one of the more exciting things is the 2023 Fire Academy has started with 14 recruits in the class. We had a total of 27 applicants, which is down significantly from what we've had in the past. Um, but this is also the first time we can have an academy without any of the uh, COVID precautions that we had to take on the last one. The last one was a challenge with uh, between social distancing, masking. We had to cancel a number of classes when there were COVID outbreaks. So hopefully this one is going to get back to some semblance of normal. We also had uh, the number is nine. It's, I was actually correct. It's eight individuals in the Intercanyon ENT class, which is a record for us. Uh, they're taking their national registry now. Um, that's, like I said, a record. We've never had that many people finish an ENT class before, so that's very exciting. Fire prevention, uh, Fire Marshal Parker did 67 inspections for the month of December, and fleet facilities, we had some minor malfunctions with heaters, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we are going to be moving forward with a uh, purchase of one more utility vehicle. Uh, we budgeted for it this year, and we're going to Continue to buy smaller vehicles. Uh, the new Ford Ranger, well, the Ford Ranger for the last five years has an Echo Boost motor. It's getting right around 25 miles to the gallon. Um, this is going to be for uh, the wildland captain Yellen. Uh, a lot of his driving is just driving. It's not a lot of response. He drives to meetings. He travels all around the district. And after discussing with him, he agreed that a smaller vehicle makes more sense than a three-quarter ton or a one-ton vehicle. You know, our one-ton vehicles are getting, you know, 10 miles to the gallon. Which is fine if you need that, but um, and fleet manager Hojanowski was able to locate a slightly used Ford Ranger that we're going to be purchasing, and we should be under budget finishing that up. Ambulance transports are trending up slightly. I mean, we're still. I think we. I believe we had seventy-five runs and thirty-six transports. It's like 50%. Yeah, so I mean, trending up ish. Yeah, yeah, they're trending. Yeah. All right. Any questions for the chief? Hearing none, we'll move into old business. Like Wagner, would you like to uh, update us on the outreach committee? I would. I'd like to introduce Sharon and have her come on up and give us a quick demo of where we're at with the. Uh, um, current website. Um, I will make a cautionary tale that it's still in a staging, so it's not actually officially up and running, but there are a couple of uh, administrative steps that we have to go through to get that approved and then launched on the uh, portal, and then we'll be up and going. So, Sharon, so nice. real quick, can, since we have some new people on today's meeting, can you just give a brief history of how we got to this point, just so they understand where we're at? Sure. Well, we we knew uh, as a department that we needed to update our website and uh, proceeded to apply for a micro grant from the statewide internet portal group and uh, were awarded that grant, which then allowed us to hire a, a contractor to do some of the development work and design work for us. And then our PIOs and folks within the fire department really populated the rest of the site as much as they could. And uh, the board tried to stay out of the way. And, um, and we're, here's, here's the result as we're launching today. And Sharon is one of our PIOs. And then uh, Firefighter Urban is another PIO. And I know lots of other fire folks have uh, contributed to the website. I think, yeah, it's been a huge team effort. Um, could not have done it without everyone's help. So as Director Wagner mentioned, we um, about a year ago started talking about 
trying to get a new website from what we had because we recognized that it didn't provide all the information that everybody in the community needed and deserved. And so I actually got started with SIPA a year ago and our microgrant process opened in April and we immediately applied and received that grant along with entertaining fires. So they were working on the new website too. And um, we got a web designer hired, the cobweb design, Trish Coberly. And she has been working on getting all of this information copied over from our current website and then new stuff added that we have sent her. So this, what you see right here is our homepage. And what we have is a rotating set of photos here at the top and they can link to various pages that we have. And we can use this to showcase things that are of current concern going on right now that we really wanna highlight. So we put those three, for now we have three, when the chipping program opens, we can do that. When we've got a fire, we can put that up there. We can also have a banner at the very top of the website that lets people know that there's an emergency or any other information that they might need. And then we can come down here a little bit. You see just a little more about us. Again, some more of those important things that we really want people to know about. Our message from our chief. And then down here, people can get signed up with our Community Connect. They can get signed up for Lookout Alert and Code Red, so they receive those emergency alert notifications from our sheriff's offices. And then we've got our Facebook feed and our Twitter feed. So again, when there's an emergency, we're using these to primarily connect and share information that is um, of most interest to everyone so they can make informed decisions to stay safe. So all of that's right there on our homepage for everybody to see. And then we have at the very bottom our stations and we'll be getting pictures up of those and have information about each of the stations so people can learn more about us. The menus up here at the top, we parse things out into about us, so about the organization. Um, we've got our wildland division with the ArcGIS, all of the information that was on that site is all populated into here now. We've got, next is our emergency services. So you can see EMS, fire suppression, and search and rescue, the three pieces that we primarily provide as services. Then our community services. So we've got, again, that morning wildfire briefing that's currently on the ArcGIS page. We've got our wildland division with more information there. Stay click. Shipping program, home assessments, pile burning, community ambassadors, community resources. So there's a separate page for all of these to make it easier for everyone to find the information that they want. We've got our programs and partnerships that includes um, working with the Upper South Platte Coalition and the Coast Walk, all of that good stuff. Um, slash collections by the various counties when those things open back up. Our cadet program, more about our fire marshal, CCAR classes that Inner Canyon hosts that we will also be sending to the lab send people to, and then again, Community Connect. Over here, yeah, don't move. I want to, so again, that's an action item for people. If they want to find out more about becoming a community ambassador, becoming a volunteer, getting an open permit so they can burn their own slash piles on their properties, learn about the consolidation, um, get an address signed so we can help find them easier, mm -hmm. request a home assessment or a core request of the department. Transparency will be where our core requests are, board of directors, We'll inform people about what it is that our board of directors do in helping guide and run our district. We've got our meeting minutes and agendas under here. Right now, it should be populated with all of 2022 and 2021. Our financials will have our previous year budgets, and that all includes all the way up to 2023. If we have any notices or um, requests for proposals that we want to put out, again, right there, transparent on the website for everyone to see. We've got elections coming up. Nope, it went to the wrong spot. Elections. So again, helping people find the information that they need if they would like to join and be part of our district. Moving over here to FAQs, because there's a lot of information here. I just kind of want to highlight this. Um, I'm so amazed that our web developer could put all this together. So we sent her this and she got it all organized in a great way for people. Again, if they have those questions, here's a great way to, to get them all answered. And there's a lot there. So good stuff to read. And then lastly, um, how 
everyone can support us if they want to, if they don't want to become firefighter, how else can you help support the district that you live in? So various things like um, you can go to Amazon Smile and choose our Firefighter Association as your designated charity. And when you purchase things from Amazon, then a portion of that 0.05%, I think it is, um, comes back to us from Amazon, not from you. You don't pay any of that. King Supers, if you shop there, you can have us designated as your charitable contribution. And again, King Supers sends us some money. So that is the website in a nutshell. We've got some more things to get in there. We've got some more graphics to create, but we're pretty excited um, that it's coming together and we're hoping to launch at the end of the month. So one of the nicest things about this is that it's easily uh, edited by a number of people in the department. We're not stuck with one person who's out of the country. We don't have a bug when he's out of the country. So it's just really a, a nice piece. It's a flexible piece. And I think it's going to answer the questions that help you know, provide people information about the about the district. Yes, that, that's an, an important point. Um, because a lot of what's happened with our districts over the years when you know with the age of the internet is that it usually tended to be someone who had a little bit of technological skill who could put together a website, but then if they moved on, then no one else had access to that and couldn't update it and things would fall behind in information. And you see a lot of that in, in um, rural districts, especially throughout the state and the, the country. So this way, SIPA has the platform. They, they do the hosting, um, they do all the website updates, all the maintenance, all the security. So all of that is handled and taken care of for us. We can designate who we'd like to have access on our end so we can have multiple people who can get in there and add new content as it needs to be added. And because this is on a .gov platform, that adds us extra bonus level of security because it's harder for individuals with malicious intent to create a .gov website or spoof that so they can't copy us and try and send someone to their site to steal their information. So all of those things kind of help. And in, on top of all of that, it's also compliant with that HB 2111-1110 bill for accessibility, which by next July 1st of 2024, all government websites must be compliant with that level of accessibility um, guidelines. And if you aren't someone who has a disability who comes to the website and is trying to find information, and if they can't, they can basically file a lawsuit and come after you for um, thousands of dollars a day for you being out of compliance. So the platform is all compliant, then we just have to make sure that the content that we add is compliant. So that's a huge piece of it as well. And one of the big reasons we wanted to get a new website. So um, Sharon, can you can you talk a little bit about how we will use the website from our end sort of day to day, week to week? Um, day to day, we will have access. And yes, um, Chief Barbara, me, um, Bethany. You know, when when there's an emergency situation that goes on, we can log in and we can add those alerts. We can um, add, say, Twitter feeds for things that are specific to mm -hmm. an emergency event. Week to week, month to month, essentially, it's going to be you know when when something like the chipping program opens up, we can go in there and add that information so people can get signed up. When the slash programs open up, we can have that calendar listed on our site. So it, it's mostly trying to keep the most current information out there and having a good, known, reliable place for everyone to, to become familiar with going to to find that information. So. <laughs> Well, again, it's not quite officially up. We have a couple of uh, hoops we have to jump through um, with to get it authorized and then actually launch. Uh, I think the chief here will be able to sign off on that as we go forward and when that's available. But uh, and again, I think it's just important to remember uh, this is really a it's really fairly easy to work in this platform. Um, I even get to play in it sometimes. <laughs> I haven't screwed up yet, so um, yeah, it is. Um, anyway, thank you to all of the folks who populated this and got it up and running, and really did it in fast, uh, fast time. And it was uh, it's good to see. It was a lot of work. It's a lot of transparency. That's it. That's our report for now.
All right, that takes us to item number two or uh, sub item number two under item number eight, the consolidation committee update. Um, Chief, we have the presentation and we can uh, go step by step and I, along with Director Woods and hopefully yourself will be able to clarify some of the presentation provided to us by Magellan. And I would ask that my uh, fellow board members from Inner Canyon, if you want to interject anything, um, by all means, because I know that you sat through the presentation. It was a lot of information. Mm -hmm. um, the, the consolidation committee has, when did we start just initial discussions about this? Before COVID. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> this, this COVID <laughs> happened and then we took a little hiatus. The director Woods and I were talking about it either yesterday or today about um, how long we have been working with the chief on consolidation in terms of what this uh, possibly could provide to the community and, and trying to work with our partners in North Fork and Inner Canyon. And um, so this has been a long endeavor too, just as Director Wagner and Sharon were talking about the efforts that they put towards the website. This point that we are at, that we can provide the survey results is exciting for us. So as you see, you were going to get the same presentation that we received um, last week, I think it was. And this presentation was catered to each specific fire district. So last night, Inner Canyon presented the results of their district findings. We are presenting the results of our district's finding, and North Fork is next week or later this week? Next week. Next week. So we are not going to present Inner Canyon's results. You had an opportunity if you wanted to sit uh, in their board meeting last night. They're not going to present our results. This is going to be specific to what we found through Magellan's strategies, Elk Creek Fire Protection District Opinion Survey. And I am going to do my best, and I would ask, again, don't hesitate to interject on anything that I'm presenting if I, I step over something. But um, just as a show of hands, who here completed the uh, survey, regardless of what district you're in? So by and large, everybody. So I won't have to belabor you by reading the, the points. You understand the intent uh, and the questions. But as you see, as we go to the first uh, slide, the survey goals, it's important for everybody to understand um, that our attempt was to learn more about the community's perception on fire and emergency service and preparedness, to gauge the awareness about the services provided by their district, to understand the community satisfaction and quality offered by the district, and then to de determine the community's attitudes towards the potential consolidation. This is the beginning of the beginning as um, we are working towards uh, the, the possibility of what consolidation may or may not look like with our partnering agencies. Um, <clears throat> some specific information, uh, we go to the next slide, Jake. We were able to receive 711 registered voters from Elk Creek that participated. Those results are, are very good in terms of what surveys typically are. They're usually, uh, if I remember, it was in the two, three, and 5% range, and we we were um, above that. Uh, we all know that, the, well, if you don't know, the interviews were conducted November 16th through the 14th. The data was weighed to be a representation of voter turnout through demographics on an odd year election, because they feel that odd year elections are more uh, consistent with the type of turnout that we would get if this budget, if, if this issue uh, appeared on the ballot. And then the margin of error, of course, is uh, plus or minus 3.56% with a 95% confidence rate. As we go to the next slide, it shows what that 21, 2021 turnout was in terms of age, sex, and party affiliation. And that gives you an idea, that is what they suppose will be the similar turnout in this uh, potential election if this were to go onto the ballot. Any questions on that? And if you can see it, good God. All right, yeah. 
As we go to the next slide, the first question was, do you think the fire risk in the community has increased, stayed the same or decrease over the past few years? Overwhelmingly, 64% of those that were surveyed thought it had increased. Um, there are uh, there were 2% that were unsure. And then um, I would imagine they are new to the area because anybody who's aware, uh, who lives here is aware of what our concerns are. Um, as we go to the next question, how much of a concern is the risk of wildland forest or open space grassland fire in your community? In the Oak Creek community, 73% of those respondents felt that there was a big concern and only 1% felt that it was no concern at all. <laughs> well, interesting. And then even those that it's not too much of concern or a concern, if you ask me. Do you believe the, the next slide, do you believe the following statement is true or false? The number of volunteer firefighters, EMT and paramedics have decreased over the last five years. Now, for those in this, in this uh, environment, we, I know we have a lot of people that come to this meeting a lot, so we're, we're familiar with that. But surprisingly, the majority thought that this was true, is that it has decreased. Um, now, it's, it's minutely uh, higher than those that are unsure, but it is markedly larger than those that don't believe that to be true at all. And just in Colorado, I know that we are 3,000 volunteer firefighters short. So we know that there is a, uh, a significant issue that Chief Ware and Chief Sherlaw and our other chiefs that are, are dealing with this, they address the protection issues of our community. Next slide. Do you approve or disapprove of the job Elk Creek Fire Protection District is doing to provide fire protection services and emergency rescue services to the community? Well, that's a nice um, acknowledgement for our, our sister and brother firefighters in uh, Elk Creek and Chief Ware and his staff, where we have 86% approval rating. The next slide. Do you think that Elk Creek Fire Protection District has the financial resources needed to provide an acceptable amount of fire protection service to the community? 65% thought that there was not enough financial resources. Now, I know Chief Ware does his best, and we see uh, uh, monthly, we hear from Treasury Director Woods that uh, we are doing our best to maintain a balanced budget. But um, the perception out there, and uh, which is important for us to recognize, is that the resources uh, could be increased. The... Um, Next slide. Do you agree or disagree with the following statement? The Elk Creek Fire Protection District is fiscally, fiscally responsible and spends taxpayer money wisely. And 58% believe that. And again, anybody who sat through uh, Sharon's presentation should know that. The next slide. Would you support or oppose a property tax increase to generate additional funding at for the local fire protection district? Now, this, this should be telling because oftentimes we know that uh, anytime that there is a discussion and an increase of taxes, that it's typically shot down, that uh, there is not uh, a total, there is not support for it. But to have 75% totally support this question uh, shows that there is a belief in what we are doing and how we can better support the, the community. The, so the facts in terms of the, the results of the survey. Now, the a very touchy subject, the mill increase. When we go to, the, I'm sure you're on the next slide, Jake, and we'll go one more. <clears throat> As a point of context, the, and I'll let you read this, but follow the bouncing ball, as they used to say when I was a kid. There may be a question, this was presented on the survey, and you may or may not remember it, but there may be a question on the ballot next November asking voters in the Elk Creek Fire Protection District to consolidate with Inner Canyon and North Fork and to raise property taxes by 3.5 mil to generate $1.5 million in additional funding to create a new fire, fire protection district. The additional revenue would be used to hire full-time firefighters, EMT, paramedics, and update aging en engines equipment and continue to provide ongoing critical training opportunities for staff and volunteers. 
For voters who live in Elk Creek, this, this was the telling piece to give context to what this might actually involve. For voters who live inside of Elk Creek, the ballot question would increase the current fire district mill to from 12.5 to 16. The mill levy increase will cost a homeowner about $121 annually, or $10.14 a month for a home valued at $500,000. And that is a medium uh, average that Magellan determined for the area. If an election were held today, would you vote yes and approve or vote no and reject a 3.5 mil property tax increase to generate the $1.5 million in additional funding? Um, now, the next slide. As you look at the results, again, overwhelmingly people voted, uh, people chose on the survey to approve, well, they, that they would approve an increase in the mill by 74%. When you look at that and you break down that 74% to the boxes under, underneath, that definitely yes, the 40% the Forty percent threshold, Magellan says, is really where they want to be for any type of ballot issue to have a degree of potential success. If they can get uh, definitely yes at about forty percent, then they um, they feel that it is worth pursuing. Well, Creek came in at forty-two percent. Am I missing anything, Sharon? Was that it, Jake? Did I miss anything? Yes. Call. It was sixty percent. I don't know if that's the sum of definitely and probably yes. So that's definitely probably when we go into the next level. Yeah. So, and thanks for pointing that out. This is just the initial question addressing the, the topic. Got it. We're good. Okay. All right. Now, now the next slide, Chief. Consolidation and the 16 mil increase information questions. That's ranked by um, total much more likely. Ranked by total much more likely. Grammatically, I have no idea what that means. Um, but below is some information about why the Fire Protection District would be considering a ballot measure to consolidate and increase property taxes to create additional funding. After reading the information, and I think this is what you were alluding to now that we're becoming more informed, after reading the information, please indicate if you are more like if you are likely to vote yes, approve the ballot measure, or to consolidate. So, as people went through, there was somewhat of a point of information. There was point of information that was provided, and um, what they um, let's see. Top three messages for Elk Creek is that the 400 square miles covered by the three districts are some of the highest risks. Um, highest risk fire areas in the state. And as mentioned, three fire protection districts rely heavily on volunteer volunteer fire or EMTs and paramedics. Mill levy increase were to pass, it would allow the consolidation. And then if the mill levy tax increase were to pass, the consolidated fire protection district would be able to cover increased costs for the fire protection district, medical equipment, and so on. Now, as they went through they asked the question again after they provided that, that information and we're on uh, uh, informed question of 60 mils, Chief, I, two slides later. So again, we provided the information, Magellan provided the information in the survey. Now we went up to, if you look at the following question, asking after ed, after a slight bit of education and providing the question again, that number jumped to 79% from, from 74% to a 5% increase. But the definitely yes would approve went from 42% to 50%. So that um, even more so in the area that Magellan feels that it, it would be appropriate to move forward with the consolidation question. Um, 
And since you have already presented, could I provide those results for you? I have them right here, do you? Yes, I do. Yes. So this question, when uh, provided to Inner Canyon's constituents, uh, was initially 53%. They had a higher rate of uh, believing that this was an important piece of, of um, approving the mill increase. And theirs jumped from 53 to 58%. So uh, again, a market approval for what the information is providing and how that mill increase could um, affect positively our constituents. Did you want to add anything about um, Inner Canyon further on that question? Uh, no, we, uh, overall, I'm going through the results from Inner Canyon as you are. And I would say that the feedback is within one to two percentage. The trend is roughly the same as far as the feedback for residents in Inner Canyon. And um, just point of clarification, my understanding is from the consultants that if you have the sum of those two blue, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, but um, in the approval of 60% or greater, that that is a strong indication of support if the ballot initiative was on a ballot. Okay, so I might be mistaken. Chief, do you remember what that threshold, Sharon? Because yeah, I did email with Angel, and that was my understanding. That's that was my understanding, too. Yeah, but some of the blue. Yeah, uh, and some of the two were 60%. The sum of, well, the sum yeah, of the two. Some, the sum of the two. Yeah. So yeah, we're, they, we're well yeah, we'll, above we'll, that. 60% we'll, yeah, threshold that Magellan indicated is very positive in terms of presenting this to the constituents. Yeah, okay. and if that definitely, yes, is 50% yeah. or higher, right? Yeah. Well, it went Thank from, you. it definitely went from 42% before the education yeah. piece yes. to now 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%. Yeah. I can't that. Okay, next slide. Elk Creek Fire Protection District consolidation and 16 mil increase question. Movement from movement from uninformed to informed. And this is basically clarifying exactly what we were just talking about. A 5% increase on the uh, um, the positive with a 8% uh, um, increase on a definitely yes. And then 3% uh, on a 3% reduction on the total no, which is um, interesting. And then 2% uh, reduction on the undecided. Now, uh, these are, I know that uh, Director Novi and I have talked about some of these things. Uh, these next two slides, I think, are really give some clarity on what our constituents think. So the first are going to be the positive positive uh, res positive um, opinions of our of these people. So you will see on the next slide, Chief. Um, this uh, first unaffiliated voter, over 65 equipment gets old, we need trained protection. Since the population is increasing, we need an increase in more quality uh, fire protection. The second one down, um, adding additional full-time personnel, better equipment and training, or add, uh, stating, add additional full-time personnel, better equipment and stating. Next one down, um, uh, male Democrat, 55 to 64. This is a high priority matter and should receive appropriate funding. Uh, the next one down, uh, fe uh, female Democrat, 35 to 44 increase in response times, overall increase in safety and services to the community. And then uh, finally, one of the last points made uh, was from a 65 over male Republican. High fire district need the support of all firefighters, need fast response times. <laughs> that is important. We're just, we're just, we're yes, uh, standby. Standby. Give me a second. I don't even know. Director Bixley. Uh, yes, yes. How many people voted on it? Uh, what did we say? 700 and. And that was just 11. For Elk Creek. How many people voted in your we have 46. Yeah, 46. The goal overall was 400 across all three districts. 
Um, and we had close to 13, 1400. Yeah, I think so. Um, I did email the consultants and said, hey, you know, how do we know if we didn't just get a bunch of errant respondents? And they said they track it by IP address. So any uh, individuals attempting to respond more than once, only one submission would be received. So they found some. Um, well, I just it was a, a marked increase from what their goal was. So I said, how do you know if you know, okay. you're only getting one response per party? And they said by IP address, they're able to take out any. Well, that's comforting. Yeah. Have, so it's a little bit uh, more accurate. And that answers course. some of the things. Some yeah. scrutiny. I think that some of us might have had. You want me to send cold over there, Chief? Yeah. They'll make us take an alarm out of this. That's what I'm going to say. I'm on the scroll, but what's going on here? Yeah. Uh, who knew you were going to have three slide presentations? It's like being back in college, huh? Let's shine out. Hey, Mike, did you get that email? I just sent you an email from your questions last month. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. right. I think someone got answers already. Yeah, yeah. but there's the, the, the accounting chart. Yeah, yeah, Sharon had provided it to me and I forgot to send it to you. Oh, so it's in your inbox. All right. Chart of accounts. Put it together. Yeah, you can throw it to me with this. I can have one question on that. So you say in your billing interchange or certain things, mm -hmm. where's that coming in on the on the accounts? It's it's okay. go, it's, it goes in this separate account. So there's a group of accounts for maintenance and that 50% of those accounts are billed to the There's a, a section for prevention, and 50% of those accounts. So it doesn't come in on the yeah. No, it doesn't come in. It's been in the expense accounts. Okay. That helps. Yeah, yeah there's all of that. Yeah, I think so. Sugar, are you comfortable with me? This is really cool. Uh, Sharon, are you comfortable with me just reading the slide? Slide. I'm fine. You can talk to me. Okay. All right. Let's, um, for sake of your all's time, and um, I'll just go through some of the the reasons why people would vote no. So the, there's there were three specific themes that they picked up. They would not vote no for tax increases. Taxes are too high already. The second was the belief that there would be a decrease in the level of service. And the third theme was um, they would support consolidation, but not support tax increases. Those are people that would vote no and reject the ballot. And some of the rationale, and it, it, this is important for us to hear, uh, a male 5564 registered as an other party, says that I believe there would be a decrease in services and locations. We are at the edge of coverage now. I don't trust the consolidation move. I don't trust a consolidation move would increase services. Another male, 65 plus and affiliated. Property values have increased incredibly. And with those increased values, taxes have gone up already. Another uh, comment made, by a male, 18 to 34, unaffiliated. Elk Creek can't afford to hire and retain enough paid staff as it is, considering or absorbing two other fire departments who have no paid staff doesn't make any sense. A male, 54 to, or 45 to 54, Democrat. I am 100% supportive of consolidation. But you are asking for an outrageous mill levy increase after taxpayers just voted on a major tax hike for the fire department just a couple of years ago. Property taxes have been skyrocketing too, with property values blowing up the last three years. And the final comment that they provided is a female 45 to 54 Republican 
we are taxed enough, no more tax. So uh, I, I thought it was relative for them to give two completely opposite sides of the spectrum in there. Uh, for us to have a better understanding of what the flavor of the community is. Um, What's that? Okay. Sorry. Um, I'm just notes taking and notes and trying to clarify. Now, okay. after all of that, the final question was, although it is a long way off, how likely are you to vote in the November 2023 election? And of those uh, 700 plus respondents, 91% said they are extremely likely, 7% said they are very likely, and 1% said they are uh, uh, somewhat likely, and 1% said they are unlikely to vote. Uh, when we look at the survey demographics, this too is relative. The split between male and female survey respondents is 50-50. The split between survey respondents in, term of, in terms of our um, political parties, I'll go from highest to lowest, 41% are unaffiliated, 32% were Republican, 26% were Democrat, and 1% was other party. And then to give some demographics about uh, what, how much you make a year? The the highest proportion was thirty five percent, is seventy thousand to one hundred and forty nine thousand a year, and thirty. The highest proportion of respondents was sixty five over at thirty six percent. Now uh, I know that I'm throwing a bunch of information out there, but this is going to be presented on the website for everyone to digest. It was just presented last night at Inner Canyon. It's uh, uh, presented to our board members yesterday. And um, now it's going to be presented to the public for your for your digestion, and so that you can look at this. But what it showed, what we have been provided, is that there the the community is interested in efforts to pursue consolidation. And what we need to do now, since we know a little bit about how to how to move forward, is uh, um, is to find out what the next steps might be through Magellan. Any questions on the survey? And again, I apologize for having to read slides tonight. That's not typically how we do it here, but uh, it was important for everybody to have an opportunity to see that, um, a large portion of the presentation. In, any questions on that I might be able to provide or my um, Inner Canyon colleagues or my, uh, yes, sir. Do we know the population? I knew the number a few years ago. Or fire districts here, you know, the total population. We do know the population. I can't remember what they said in the survey. 20,000. It? It's like 20,000. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And Pop it's in the big one. This is just a yeah. 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 There's like population. Elk Creek is 17,000. Okay. okay. Chief, am I missing anything? I think. <laughs> We want to go to the proposal, correct? Uh, yes, and I apologize about this. I have no idea. <laughs> no, that's okay. um, I, Are we still recording? Yes, yeah, the Zoom's still going on, so I didn't restart my computer. I, I don't want to kick everybody off the Zoom meeting because we have a handful of people on the Zoom meeting. I'd rather. I, can I just add something about the consolidation of yes. the results? Just overall, I think we were all, and I think you can certainly. Chime in. I think we were all, I don't want to say pleasantly surprised is the right word, but there was some concern about the survey and what the community would think. Tax increase, that's not popular. I don't like taxes any more than anybody else. But I think we were very pleasantly surprised and encouraged that first off, there were so many respondents, there were more than were expected. Or they were saying that 400 was a good number and we got like 1,300. So that was encouraging that people took the time to actually answer the survey. Um, because it took 15, 20 minutes like that to get through it. It was like, maybe I read slower than everybody else, don't know. But I think we were very um, encouraged that there was so much, there was so much support 
from a wide swath of people, male, female, different ages, for the fire department. And I don't know, Jackie, if you or Emily want to answer, want to add to that. But it was, it was it was it was we were like sitting there just going just smiling. From yeah. the it was it was very good news. So thank you all of you who responded. Appreciate it. I'm done. I'm sorry. I just need a clarification on the proposal. Do you have a copy of the proposal? I have a copy. It's the one we printed out. I have a copy. Here it is. I'm looking for the the language. See, that's not it. That's, that's not it. That's that's our, a data packet. Where it cross would be. It's no, one that could be printed out just before the meeting. I find no, it. No, this guy's crossing it. Is it? Is it? I don't think it's all these extra. It actually has cross in it. Okay, so um, I apologize is, a lot. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, with all that information in mind, having been presented the results of the survey, um, it would it is my recommendation that we move forward in um, approving the proposal for Magellan to continue with our community relations process. Chief, can you expand on that? Yeah, of, of course. Bit. So basically what we're doing with this is trying to mimic what Inner Canyon did at the last like that we are doing all the, the research and education. You guys kind of set the bar on the way to do it to be successful. And so <clears throat> this was the first step is to get the feedback from the public and see what the public thought. And <clears throat> as I said during a lot of this, it's all going to be driven by the public. The results of the survey are what's going to drive everything we do on the next step. And with, as, as Director Wood said, I mean, she put it plainly, pleasantly surprised was probably an understatement. I, I know when the chief, we saw this, we were, we were extremely surprised. The, the second phase of this is designing the education. You know, if, if the board agrees that we're going to do this, we need to build, we need to have a good education program and the ability to com communicate this to the people who is still up to the people. It's up to the taxpayers to do this. We don't tell them this is the way it is. So it, it's up to the voters. So uh, the company turned for and has put together a proposal for phase two to help build education and put together our kind of public education, how we're going to build this program moving out, as well as one of the biggest parts is building our ballot language. Um, Ballot language is a challenge. We are suffering from ballot language issues from our last levy lift, where our ballot language, in the words of our legal counsel, is <coughs> extremely confusing and not clear. Um, that's that's not really acceptable. And I think a lot of that was because it was done in-house. Um, I think we do need to hire professionals to do a lot of this stuff moving forward because we are not skilled at doing it. I mean, well, I think we're skilled at certain things. So what this is, is a uh, proposal to engage turn court to assist us with the next phase of this process. Um, the uh, the total cost, we, we agreed amongst the chiefs and then the uh, consolidation committee to split it three ways, which is out of our norm. Usually whenever we're doing anything from everything from dispatch things to almost every IGA that we enter into, we do assess value. Um, and obviously we're the largest, so we end up taking the bulk of it and the smaller departments, they pay less purely based on what the value of the district. Everybody agreed that this is such an important thing that we were gonna split it three ways. So, so our liability will be a third of that, of that cost. With that in mind, uh, I would look for a motion that the Oak Creek Fire Protection Board of Directors approves the proposal presented by Turncourt and Magellan to proceed with the next phase of our community relation education for the consolidation. So moved. Okay. Um, favor? I have a discussion. Yes, discussion on the motion. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I will be a no vote on this, uh, on this motion uh, for the following reasons. The following reason. 
Um, I believe at this point, given the uh, disparate dis, uh, uh, demographics, geography, uh, population, and um, financial position of each of the three districts. Uh, for example, Elk Creek has a population of 17,000. Uh, Inner Canyon has a population of about 50, 5250. And North Fork has a population of 1700. Um, and the fact that uh, Elk Creek uh, footprint is 98 square miles, Inner Canyon is 52 square miles, and um, North Fork is 240 square miles. And our revenue spending, that is Elk Creek's revenue spending for 2022 was uh, about 5.8 million. Uh, Inner Canyon spending revenue was about 2.3 million. And North Fork was 450,000. There is a huge imbalance in terms of uh, resources, personnel, uh, facilities, uh, apparatus, and um, I see my job as protecting the interests of the residents of Elk Creek, and I have to put blinders on uh, in that regard. Uh, so I do not believe that unless and until the three fire chiefs can present to this board and to the community a very compelling um, case for consolidation that, as I see it, consolidation between Elk Creek, North Fork, and Inner Canyon would run a significant risk of diminishing the level of services to Elk Creek residents. Uh, that's our con constituency. And by law, we're duty bound to uh, protect the interests of Elk Creek residents uh, without regard and without respect to uh, the population of Inner Canyon or North Fork. That's the way our system works. That's the way it's set up. That's the way it's set up by law. Um, so I cannot, in good conscience, uh, be a yes vote on this uh, on this uh, motion. I'm confused, Director. Newby. Speaking because... speaking on the motion. Thank you, Director Newby, and thank you for or my apologies for stepping out of procedural process. Speaking on the motion. Speaking on the motion, the motion is not to approve consolidation because that's up to the residents of the three districts to approve consolidation, which is what I think you're alluding no, to. You, no, you missed the discussion. Discussion on the motion. Please. Thank you. What we're voting on is using Magellan to educate the constituents in Elk Creek, Inner Canyon, and North Fork. That's what we're voting on. I understand that, uh, uh, Director Newby. Director, Newby, Director Newby, Newby, point, I, of I, I point, point of order. Point of order, Director Newby. Give a chance to respond. Uh, stand yes. by. Director Woods, any further discussion on the motion? Well, and uh, I, please state are you in favor of the motion or against the motion so we have an understanding of what your point is? I am in favor of the motion to approve. The proposal for Magellan slash Turncore to proceed with the education of the communities that would include Inner Canyon, include North Fork, and us, Elk Creek. And the chiefs actually in the meeting, the committee meeting that we had, agreed that it would be fine, it would be acceptable to split the cost of turn core 
one third, one third, one third. That was something that I believe was accepted in the committee. I could be wrong, but I was there in the meeting and that's what I understood. So we're voting on moving forward with town core being in charge of educating the constituents in all three districts about consolidation. Anything further, Director Woods? I think I'm done. Director Newman. Yes. Um, so I understand exactly what we're voting on. We are voting to spend uh, at least uh, according to this proposal, uh, at least eighty thousand dollars rounded up. Uh, but uh, more than likely, we will spend in total across the three districts a shared cost of probably one hundred twenty-five thousand, um, given the cost of uh, mailings and printing and all the other various sundry. So uh, I understand very well what we're voting on. However, we are, in my opinion, we are putting the cart before the horse. The three fire chiefs uh, and their respective experts have not presented to this board, nor to my knowledge have they presented to the other two boards, the on the ground facts for a consolidation plan and how such plan would protect the interests of the, of the residents of the Elk Creek District, which I am focused on and I believe that this board must be focused on. Anything further, Director Newman? That's it. Any other discussion on the motion? No. Any last time, any other discussion on the motion? Call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No. Just four ayes and one no. All right. Motion passes. Move to new business. 2023 election is coming up. We have a resolution. Make sure I have this right. I just have, I have uh, two resolutions. Um, I have the election resolution that we contract with a DEO, a designated election official that will allow for us to have oversight on our past election. As a point of information, our last DEO was pro bono, and we found that there were some errors in some issues, and uh, there is a way that we could probably do things more efficiently and uh, for a better sake, especially as the chief just mentioned, we want to ensure that we're doing right for the members in terms of how this election is going to take place. So we have a conversation for board approval to engage with Circuit Rider of Colorado, this DEO, this designated election officer will uh, perform these, this company will perform the duties of DEO for us. And I am, let's see, Chief was there a, a cost for this? Uh, I, I was going to say, I think it's around 20000 And this so, is a budget oh. item. Yes. This has been budgeted. It is not been, uh, um, it's been addressed. We knew that it was coming. So I'm looking for a motion to accept a proposal from Circuit Rider of Colorado for uh, the uh, position of designated election officer for the upcoming election. Make a motion to approve. Motion by Director Woods. Second. Second, Second by Director Wagner. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Uh, I think that's Barb. Am I missing anything on that? That was all we needed to do with the DEO. Right. Right. Can we change the name? Circuit Rider of Colorado. Really? No. Sorry. Circuit Rider Sorry. Okay. Um, Second item of new business. 
Director Newby? Yes. I got ahead of myself. All right, so uh, resolution calling for the 2023 regular district election and appointing a designated election official, whereas the Oak Creek Fire Protection District is a quasi-municipal corporation and political subdivision of the state of Colorado and a duty to organize an existing special district pursuant to Title 32, Article 1, CRS. You don't I need to read anything else, do I? No, I would move the resolution as presented. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Now we are on to the second item of new business, Director Newby. Yes, uh, I have a motion that I would like to make, and I'll just read it into the record. Um, I make a motion that the Elk Creek Fire Protection District Board of Directors hold a special meeting work session during the month of January 2023 for the purpose of developing a policy level strategic plan that defines the major strategies and objectives for the Elk Creek Fire Protection District during 2023 and for the purpose of notifying personnel, facilities, apparatus, and other resources necessary for achieving the major strategies and objectives from item one, and three, developing an action plan that contains the timelines, milestones, deliverables, uh, and deliverables necessary to communicate these major strategies and objectives from item one to the Elk Creek Fire Protection Board Fire Chief and the broader community. Once the subject special meeting work session is scheduled in a meeting notice, um, a meeting notice detailing the meeting location date and times, along with an appropriate agenda, will be published in accordance with. Colorado law. I have a motion on the table from Director Newby. Is there a second? I will second this motion. Discussion on the motion. I have a few comments. Maybe I'll make a comment. Uh, will you stay for or against the motion as presented? I'm going to be against this motion. And the reason is, again, the card before the horse scenario, because we don't know what we don't know. Um, we have no idea at this point if we are going to have an election in November 2023. The purpose and our point is that we will have an election in 2023 on consolidation and a middle level increase. So it's really difficult to develop a strategic plan if we don't know what the strategy is. And at this point, we don't know if there will be a consolidation. So to me, this would be developing a strategic plan for the consolidation, not the consolidation, not the mill increase. So it's not one strategic plan, it's multiple strategic plans. And I think at this point, we are premature in putting that together in January 2022. Anything else? That's it. Uh, as a maker of the motion, Director Newby? Yes. Uh, so the idea here is uh, simply to have a working session or series of working sessions uh, to develop an overall policy level plan for the district. Uh, I think this is something that the chief has talked about in the past. We've talked about it on this board in the past also. Um, I think it's uh, absolutely necessary that this board get together in a longer form uh, meeting forum uh, to uh, 
uh, understand of the, the, the questions, the issues, um, and uh, that is that are facing the district, and develop strategies for achieving um, our goals and objectives overall, and develop developing those goals and objectives uh, for the uh, present calendar year. So it's really an open, the idea is very open-ended, not focused on consolidation, but focusing on calendar history and the district's challenges for the future overall. And I don't I don't see how uh, we shouldn't be all be in favor of doing doing so. Anything else with your That's it. Point of information, two points. Um, I would ask the maker of the motion to clarify how this policy and or policy level policy level strategic planning is different than the strategies that might be developed by um, Magellan or Turin Court during their process. Well, it would seem to me to be redundant. That uh, uh, not redundant, <clears throat> but a good question. Uh, Magellan is looking from the outside in, and we need to be looking from the inside out. So this <clears throat> work session would be an internal discussion amongst the directors and uh, other staff as, as needed to develop our own um, strategies and uh, objectives for the year. Second question, if I may. Um, the way that you have phrased this motion as a special meeting is open to the public. And the way that you just phrased is it would be internal discussions amongst the board members, which would dictate an executive session. And in terms of a strategy session that could be done um, at, in a different context, could you please help me understand um, what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah. So, so Colorado law restricts um, executive sessions to very narrow um, uh, items such as personnel issues and, and um, bidding on properties and negotiations and that sort of thing. So yes, uh, a, a, a work session of the type uh, I am proposing here um, would be open to the pu public, but it would not necessarily be open to public comment. Uh, so it, it it would still it would be open to the public, yes, but it would be internal an internal work session, much like the county commissioners uh, do uh, when they have their uh, meetings every usually every Tuesday. So comments are taken from the public, the pub, but, but, but it is a public meeting in that the public gets to observe uh, our discussions. So that's the idea here. One last question. Might this be better served as a retreat format so that the, um, so that the board of directors might have an opportunity to have conversations to bring forward to the uh, public prior to the special meeting? Uh, possibly. I, I would be in favor of that if, if the board sees fit to, uh, uh, to, to be in that sort of environment, that would be fine. That would satisfy my goals here. All right, so we have a motion made by Director Newby uh, for to schedule a special meeting for the Board of Directors. You have the motion in front of you. Any other discussion on the motion? Thank you. You take questions from the audience. Thank you. I got a comment on this. I, I've been trying to do this for years at Elk Creek. Um, what he's talking about is actually in Colorado Law, it's Title 32. And um, and so when they form a special district, the first thing they have to have is a service plan. And that kind of sounds like a little bit what he's talking about, or a statement of purpose. Um, the statement of purpose for Elk Creek, it was formed before the law ever came into existence. Right now, it states something like 
we want to buy fire trucks and build buildings to put them in. And that's all it says. And this district is formed. That's the only statement they had. So I think it's very valid to have a service plan, whether it's consolidation or not. The service plan should be pretty generic anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion on the motion? Yeah, I would. I would. Uh, I mean, speaking in favor of having a meeting, I think there's some questions about. I think we need to maybe discuss a little bit more about how we're framing this. I mean, I I would have some concerns and objections about us doing sort of identification of personnel facilities, et cetera. I think we really need uh, to make sure that the staff is there to provide that information to us and then frame it in a, as you say, a more high level policy. Yes. So I'm not, I don't want this to be an operational um, strategic plan. I, yeah. Strategic plans are incredibly important and I think um, it will guide us. I think we do need to be open to Potentially bringing in aspects of what's in the consolidation, what's what would happen if the consolidation doesn't happen, and and what we would do as a follow up to if I, either of those scenarios in yeah. the process. So, um, so I would speak in favor of it. Um, I think there are some, you know, there's there's some language in the special districts handbook that guides us on what we need to do as far as a special meeting and study session uh, announcing having public access to a location, et cetera. And as long as we're sort of following that protocol, that would be important. And then I think we need to come back if anything was developed to a board meeting and have that approved officially by the board. Uh, for further discussion, uh, I, I, I think you're exactly right. And, and that's, that's the concept here really is, is to stay at a policy level Clearly. So when when in the motion we talk about a personnel plan, that's a plan against strategic, uh, you know, against strategy and goals, not you know down in the uh, in, in in the um, um, weeds. in the weeds. <laughs> right. So stay at the policy level, develop an overall in the in strategy for the year. That's the concept. And I think in some sense, I'm sorry, I, mean, I think in some sense that means it's, that policy level really is related to the fiscal responsibilities. Correct. And correction and oversight of the board. Correct. Any other discussion on the motion? Yeah. So who would be leading this discussion? So point of order or point of information? Um, point of information. Okay. Who would be leading? Uh, I, I think it would be um, conceptually, uh, we're all peers at in, in this in a working session environment. So we would all be uh, talking amongst ourselves, you know, in a obviously orderly, congenial fashion, and 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 uh, and so forth. So and and sticking to the uh, the topic of policy level strategy and objectives for the year. Any other questions? All right. Last time. Any other discussion on the motion? All right. Call for the question. At the Oak Creek Fire Protection District, schedule a special meeting on the Board of Directors as presented by Director Novi. I don't bring that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Two against? Oh, my gosh. Well, I, I'm going to clarify my name. Well, uh, I cannot uh, approve it as written. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. The, we had an opportunity during discussion for a, a motion, a friendly motion to um, change this, but we're, we called for the question. So um, as a tiebreaker, I will vote in favor of this motion and um, this motion passes. All right, that's the last item. Citizens' issues.
Mr. Whitehead? Yes, I have some uh, comments I would like to make, and uh, I wonder if I could approach the uh, table, I guess, and pass out copies of my comments in my room. We can, we can pass them out for you, Neil. If you don't have them. Well, all right. That's five for the board, and then I would like to excuse uh, them to have a copy as well. So, no, this is uh, right. and I'd like to have one copy and introduce the director to my as well. I'll provide the show out this on each time. I don't know if it's um, and Neil, do you have an electronic copy as well? Could you email? I don't think. Well, I can email you one. That would be wonderful. Yeah, this one. So I have one. Um, I'll just basically read this with a very minimal amount of um, editorial comments. Uh, the first one is underlying everything here that, as I see it, the majority of the Oak Creek Board and in open meetings, that includes the public, are in the dark about the specifics of the consolidation that the board's being asked to spend considerable amounts of taxpayer money for. Um, quote, community relation services or education. And for the purpose, and in, in the case, there is a question or questions on the ballot in a future election, and that's quoting from the turn for proposal of December the 28th. And seven months from now in August, that's a lifetime in politics. And I accept the exact, that the exact military increase depends on a lot of things like the price of eggs or diesel fuel, but certainly the structure of the consolidation should be firmed up in the minds and hearts of the fire chiefs right now. So uh, that's really a critical thing is that it's, um, the mill levy could be changed or varied according to the public appetite or conditions within the country, et cetera. So that's, that's, that's a big problem. And number two, in my view, uh, the level of service established by the Oak Creek Fire Protection District must be maintained or increased with a consolidation. And neither North Fork or Inner Canyon have rotating full time staff. And without an immediate increase in staff upon consolidation, I find it certain to believe that Oak Creek Station 1 will be called upon daily, or at least almost daily, to provide engine ambulance and utility vehicles in response to tones originating in the far reaches of the former North Fork and Inner Canyon districts. And this will leave Elk Creek Station 1 understaffed or without staff pretty much on a daily basis. And number three, uh, using taxpayer money to campaign for a tax increase, is that, quote, legal? Or is it legal but odious? And, um, I ask the question, where in Title 32 sets forth the governing language of special districts? And is there a legal justification and permission to use taxpayer money to advocate to the taxpayers to raise their taxes? And about an hour before this meeting, I got some of the language out of the uh, Title 32. And this so-called education program, is that really a thinly veiled um, campaign, uh, campaign for this election, potential election. And I would expect that if it is, that there'll be complaints filed with DOLA, which is the Department of Local Affairs, which monitors the special districts and the Secretary of State's Office Election Division. And legal or not, I do believe the process of using a uh, third party consultant is odious, and most voters will have the same opinion. And I believe this will subtract 10 to 15% by hiring current code, our turn uh, core, sorry about that, uh, that will subtract 10 to 15% from the uh, yes vote. And I do feel that it's important to recalculate the uh, SERP out of district firefighting reimbursements and this to represent monies of 
to Oak Creek Fire Protection District that are income. And if it's way too complicated to do it right, then provide an explanation of the level of accuracy of the calculations, plus or minus a thousand or plus or minus 10,000. And, and as it is, it appears to the uninitiated and even the semi-initiated to inflate Oak Creek's revenue. And that's not something that you want to do when you're uh, asking for more money. So that is sort of a housekeeping item that I think would be allow comparison district to district uh, and pretty much an exact revenue. And number five, some items that may derail the consolidation question and prepare in advance now to respond to the strong opinions by various groups. And A would be new, new developments that stress components of Elk Creek uh, such as three-story and three-story plus buildings and needing a ladder truck or a quint and a downhill mountain bike park that's a generator of many injuries requiring um, extensive ambulance runs. And does Elk Creek adopt a neutral stance such as to will as the will serve because the development is in the district? Uh, does Elk Creek negotiate with the developer for impact fees or other special considerations? Or is the taxpayer going to pay for the impact uh, in the future with no levy increases? And B, uh, will the construction of a new fire station on the grounds of the existing Inner Canyon number three on um, US 285, is this going to be mentioned or discussed as part of the consolidation discussion? And number six, I think the best case for support for consolidation and mill levy increase is realistically about 66%. And that's based on recent mill levy successes by Platte Canyon and Elk Creek Fire Protection Districts. The 80% level or rounded up 80% support level reported by Turn 4 is, in my opinion, an artifact of supporters being most likely to respond to the somewhat laborious questionnaire. So uh, uh, I say it's going to be a 66% uh, uh, positive response. And in 2015, voters of Plant Canyon Fire Protection District proved a mill levy increase with 66% yes and 34% no. And in 2019, voters of the Elk Creek Fire Protection District voted about 66% yes and 33% no. And I don't have the figures available, but and I distinctly remember on the night of the election that uh, this 66% yes was about 4 or 5% higher than 2013 when the voters approved the Mill Lady for Elk Creek. And I was kind of um, glad of that. So uh, it's, I think you're talking 66%, and then uh, you, you can start subtracting the amounts if, if some of these uh, consolidation questions. Um, other things get mixed into the, to the mix. And then what happens to uh, turn core after July the 31st in this uh, contract or um, proposal extension runs till July and the uh, main, and there's quite an extensive amount of public, quote, public education or community relations. Uh, the main, traditionally the main election season begins uh, Labor Day or around that back to September the 1st. So in these critical moments of uh, September and October to the first Tuesday in November, uh, what's turn course our role gonna uh, be in terms of all of this and the, the absolute most critical portion of, uh, of the election. So these are some of my observations and statements and um, I just thought I'd make enough for you all and, and at least in somewhat of a logical fashion for you to consider. Thank you, Mr. Whitehead. As you requested, it will be entered into the record. Any other? Yes, sir, Mike. So I got a couple of things to follow up on that. I, on that our transparency notice, I went looking for that. It's It's been corrected on the Elk Creek website. Think some of it, um, not available at Dole at all, but I don't know if that's even a thing anymore. And then on the special district association and the Elk Creek website, it's different. 
Okay, okay. And, yeah. um, so the SDA one, I think, is the official one that's supposed to be. It seems like the new website has the SDA one on it. So the SDA one um, is showing uh, our tax revenue is three about three point one million. Our budget shows it about three point nine. So that's a big difference in uh, in revenue. On that, it shows Pixley, Baker, and Devaney to be in a, on the next election cycle, and uh, and the, the Elk Creek one says it's uh, Wagner Woods and New. I think that's correct. That's it is correct. correct. Um, so I, I think this SDA one was the one that's supposed to be accurate, um, or maybe they should be linked or something. But it, it definitely doesn't have. It definitely doesn't seem right. But the SDA one says the open records go to see where the, the Elk Creek one kind of indicates maybe it's Barbara Stockton, but doesn't really say that. Um, else? Mike, would you be able to encapsulate that? And then I, I can guarantee you that between the chief, myself, and Barb, we'll work to make sure those are correct, especially as we trans, uh, transition into this new website. Right, I think both. I think the most accurate information is on the Elk Creek website right now, but it's not all there. And so I, I would think that that transparency notice, I think, is due on the fifteenth of January. So we have. So today. I think it's. I think just a form to fill out on on the SDA site. Uh, it also has a Sue Blair as the election official. Doesn't have one on the Elk Creek site. And the circuit writer, I can't find. Can you spell that for me? Circuit writer, whoever he is. It's it's a circuit writer. Just common spelling. It's a like an electrical circuit. Circuit writer or maybe -E -E circuit. W r i t e r. R i d e r. Writer. Like oh, writer. Mm -hmm. Circuit writer. Okay. Got it. Um, so there's a whole bunch of stuff, election stuff going on starting this month. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of actions that are supposed to be taken starting very soon. All right. And as I mentioned, it, if you just put that together so we can ensure that we haven't missed anything, I know the chief and Barb are working hard to make sure all that's done. But um, two sets of eyes on any effort is certainly going to be better than. Them. And when you talk about different websites populating the same information, uh, I, I we can't I can't speak to the SDA nor the state. But, uh, um, I know that I know that we'll work hard to make sure that it's all updated. All right. Well, I'll follow. Oh, you know, and you can just the same email address that I emailed you. You got it. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Any other uh, questions or concerns? Yes, just a couple observations. Um, just listening tonight, this turn core effort, it sounds like you're not going to need a Friends of Elk Creek effort um, like was uh, used before. So, I mean, it sounds like they're going to do the education for the public. And, you know, depending on what you do, I, I mean, to me, it sounds like uh, the effort done by Friends of Elk Creek last time. This is replacing it. So oh, I think that would be presumptive. And, okay. Um, and I apologize. I believe that the, the Friends of Elk Creek are our most, most vital effort to be able to educate the community. Nobody listens to your friends like your friends. Right. But we also we respect what the um, expert opinions of the of what Magellan and Turncourt are able to provide. And just as I mentioned to Mike, I mean, two sets of eyes on one problem, I think, just compounds the energy and, and the potential for it to be successful. And I think I speak on behalf of my board members. We would never turn away Friends of the Elk Creek, especially in such a, um, uh, a time that we have as with the consolidation efforts that may move forward and with the uh, uh, Sunset Mill that we are coming up as well. So that this is as important a time as ever to continue to foster that that uh, organization and the relationships that that organization has. Yeah, there may be then some thought given to, 
having that group and friends of Elk Creek getting together. And I, I foresee that the, we will have the potential okay. for uh, a conversation. I think uh, it's alluded to in the proposal, yeah. actually. So, okay. So it includes and brings in stakeholders, but the, the bigger real effort is around messaging so that we're all messaging the same. That would make sense. And this observation is just on your last discussion about a policy meeting. I have participated in it. I can't count how many of those kinds of meetings. You would benefit tremendously from a skilled facilitator. Tremendously. So it's my observation. Good points. Thank you. That's it. Any other comments? Yes. Sure. So having been involved in Friends of Elk Creek Fire in the last two Milwaukee efforts that we did, and also being part of the department, I can attest that you have to keep things separate. The fire department has to be very careful about what they say and how they say when they're putting out information about mill levies or consolidations. If the consultant they're hiring is working on behalf of the department, they cannot campaign. And, and we know this because we've done this Friends of Elk Creek can campaign. The consultant hired by the department cannot campaign. That is why I thought Friends of Elk Creek existed because they can do those things. During the first mill levy, um, Chief McLaughlin had many community meetings and he got up and he presented the facts. Here's where the district stands. Here's the help we need. Here's what would happen if you choose not to pass this. That's what they're allowed to do. And that's it. The Friends of Elk Creek can make those impassioned pleas and make those campaigns. So absolutely, both organizations are required to improve, as we saw with the, the statistics, 49% of the, of the people thought that, you know, that there's maybe an, an increase in, in our fire um, danger and, and not a decrease in firefighters. And 47% were unsure. That's a really close margin. That tells us that there's a lot of education that we can do. So we we need both. And, and I'm glad that the board has passed to approve that hiring that consultant. And I absolutely am ecstatic that you know we could be forming the Friends of Elk Creek Fire again to be working on the behalf of this department so that we serve the constituents of this district better. That's thank you sense. for those comments. Yes, sir. So I think to kind of follow on with some of the other comments and some of the, the things that I had, had talked about last time, I think Director Newby makes a good point that it would be good for the board um, and the public to see what is the plan for consolidation from an operational perspective. That's kind of what I read into Director Newby's comments. Um, you know, when I read the consultant's report that, that's on the website, we talked a little bit about that last month. It sounds like the thinking in some of those areas has already, excuse me, has already moved past what's in that report. So I think there is an advantage to seeing an operational plan that would go along with uh, consolidating. And that's a great point. And at our last consolidation meeting, that was a question that was that I personally posed to Chief Blair, Chief Sherlaw, and Chief Rogers. Um, so uh, that and Chief guaranteed me that they're in the works with that right now. So it's not something that has been disregarded or hasn't been addressed yet. I mean, I know they've been working. So we'll see that sooner than later. Thank you. Any other comments? That's time. Any other comments? Yes. Thank you for having us. I know these are open meetings, um, but it's good to see what our neighbors are doing, that you guys are dedicated to you know, protecting the best interests of our residents up here. Um, I would encourage you guys all to have an open mind about the strategy session. Uh, we just had one in October. Uh, it was a public meeting. The public was present. And it's great for them to see how we are working through issues and coming to solutions. And as a matter of fact, we have another one scheduled for next Friday. So um, I can't speak on that behalf of the whole board, but I found it to be very, very valuable. I know these nightly meetings have set agendas and specific business and operational things that need to be voted on. Uh, but during those strategy sessions, we can really dive deeper into 
talking through issues and identify the critical issues um, that our department finds important. So um, I hope you find that time to be valuable as you work with your. Did you have uh, Chief Sherlaw sitting in your strategy session? Yes, we had uh, Chief Sherlaw, I believe we had Deputy Chief Hale sat there. Um, so we did have other members as well from the community, and from the community as well. So keep in mind, my word of advice to you guys is kind of have your own individual brainstorming sessions of what you want to discuss and you guys can bring those topics and then maybe choose the top two or three because you're going to find yourselves all over the board but it's a great place to start thank you we appreciate your participation here and had it not been my girlfriend's birthday i would have been at your meeting last night <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right so bad yes yeah we had actually had some in-depth conversation about trying to get there so yeah um but again great great appreciation for you being here. any other questions or comments or concerns from the community right well we thank you all for almost uh uh, two and a half hour meeting and your participation and your patience with us and my reading slides uh, that is nothing not fun so i would uh, accept the motion to adjourn motion to adjourn with a second okay. uh by director wagner all in favor Aye. Aye. uh passes unanimously at 8 21. Oh,